Good afternoon, Tony Dottino, founder of the USA Memory Championship. And we're in the stages of preparing for our 25th event. It's hard to believe uh, we've done 24 events already, and we're on our way to our 25th, which is going to be done in September here at uh, Full Sail University uh, in uh, Winter Park, Florida. We have people signing up for the qualifying events that we'll do online using the Games of Memory League, which gives everybody a chance to practice and get ready for the qualifying events that we'll have at the end of July. So if you've got any interest in testing your memory, uh, check in with the USA Memory Championship website uh, and plan to have some fun and learn some new skills. The Memory League folks will let us uh, use their games to practice so that you can be ready by July, and I think it's a heck of a, a great opportunity for anybody that has got any interest in their own memories. But for today, uh, I want to talk about the April issue. One of my favorite magazines is uh, Mind, Mood, and Memory, and it's not a magazine, it's a newsletter. It's put out by the Massachusetts General Hospital folks. You can see this. It's probably one of my favorite magazines or news articles uh, on memory. And boy, they've got so many fabulous tips that they offer in each of their issues. Uh, this is the April 2024 issue, and it brought a new perspective to uh, new and old hobbies and how hobbies, new or old, can boost your, your mood and how you feel about life and your purpose and what you can do and the fun that you may be having, having in it and the enjoyment you have in living and the purposes that keep you going, give you those stress reliefs, and then your memory, how do these hobbies, then the ones that you play, chess, checkers, card games of some sort, bridge, uh, have an impact on your memory, but all of it, if you wrap it up into a nice package, they wrap it up very well into thinking skills. What are some of the hobbies that you may engage in that will keep your mind stimulated? And that's what we're learning more and more about long-term mental fitness and long-term mental health and how do we do things that continue to improve our brain. I was going to use the word stress. I didn't want to use the word stress because I don't want you to be stressed. I don't even want to use it. And that increase your brain power. It increases your thinking skills. So I'm looking at improving your mental fitness. And then can you add a partner into this? So is there a way that you can bring somebody along with you and have uh, a partner, which then builds another element of long-term cognitive fitness, social interaction. So if you think about this, we see people doing a lot of, uh, oh God, the big craze is uh, pickleball. Pickleball, I'm looking and thinking of tennis, uh, but pickleball and the number of people that are now engaged in pickleball leagues, uh, building some exercise into their routine. So the notion of exercise is, I think, getting across to a vast number of people regardless of age having the physical ability to get out on a pickleball court is not as taxing as playing tennis. We now have pickleball leagues. There's even pickleball on ESPN. I mean, it's just gotten crazy. And so people are, want to maintain mental fitness. They want to maintain physical fitness. And of course, building social interaction is almost like magnetizing people to do things. So you know that playing is going to help your brain, no matter what, playing any type of thing, pickleball, tennis, bridge, chess, checkers, a hobby, maybe it's painting, I mean, paint by numbers, or being doing art projects, uh, hobbies people have in gardening. I mean, there's just so many different things that people would define as a hobby, but what's important is that it gives your brain and your mind a challenge, it, it, and especially if you're learning to do new elements of it and taking an old hobby and putting new twists to it and learning new recipes if you like to cook and you happen to be the, the master chef in the family and you love cooking, find new recipes, find different foods, talk to people about what they're cooking and some of the meals that they have, talk to somebody that's not of your same uh, native uh, descent and find out some of the meals that they have and vary it. So there's just a, a whole variety of ways 
of putting your attention towards something that's beneficial to your mental fitness, helping you to improve your memory, your focus. Uh, maybe you run in, you might want to even wrap that up into problem solving. But all of it coming together in a way of, you, of exercising your mental fitness and, and putting new thinking into your mind, which is a way of helping your brain to grow. And there's no age limit to this. People think, oh my goodness, I'm losing my memory, I'm forgetting some names, I forgot where I put my car keys. And all of it is just part of the process. And forgetting where you put your car keys, if you didn't focus on where you put them, there are times when I go into parking lots, right? And what level tier did I park in and what section did I park in? Uh, if you don't stop and focus in the moment of parking your vehicle, good chance if it's a multi-level uh, garage and multi-wide, as in airports, well, you're going to have some trouble finding your car, and that has nothing to do with the fact your memory's fading. It has to do with we are so busy doing multiple things that we lose our focus. The great thing about the brain hobby exercises you may be enjoying this for years, or you may have just started it, but you're learning a new hobby has advantages as it stimulates the brain. It gives you new patterns and new pathways. And anything that will stimulate your thinking is a good thing. You don't have to give up hobbies. If you've got all the hobbies that you've played, try to find new variations, play with new people. Try teaching it to someone that's never played it before. If you've been a long-time photographer, you're a cook or piano player, just add new challenges to it. If you're a photographer, as I talk with my, uh, my niece who loves to take photography, change the scenery that you're going after. Instead of looking at uh, uh, driftwood and ocean and lakes and ponds, you know, go someplace where you're watching athletics and you're looking for athletic performance with different pictures. Maybe it's crowds in a, in a stand. Vary what you do. As I already discussed, if you're a cook, change your patterns. Some people like to play piano. My goodness, well, change your music. If you're playing certain kinds of music, you know, switch your, your music in terms of what you do. Uh, <clears throat> the important thing is that you want to take something that's new, that's going to challenge you to have to learn, focus, pay attention. And there are benefits to this. You know, when you start to see the benefits of learning something new, you have to step and think about, okay, so what is the benefit of, of learning something new? Well, the first thing is you've, you've got to think it through. You've got to think, okay, well, I've got to pay attention to this. I've already said you've got to be focused. You want to think it through. What is this? How does this attach to things I've already learned? And what will I do with this? How will, it find, how will I find time on my calendar? Where will I put, put, the, put this into my week-long agenda where I can make the time for it but not take away from family? How will I make the time where I'm not obsessive about it? And so sometimes we get new hobbies and we love them so much, that's all we want to do and we ignore everything else around us. Well, where can I put some time boundaries around it so I have some good time management skills? But, but that's part of your planning. It's all part of what? working and exercising your brain. Now, you want to go through that, now you have to learn, right? So you, you put your plan together, now you need to learn. So who are you going to learn from? Are you going to learn from instructions? Are you going to go to a, a Google site or a YouTube video? Are you going to learn from other, somebody else that's a master at the, ex, uh, at the hobby? Are you going to go to a community uh, club and find out if anybody's there at the community center? that is good at this, that you can sit and chat with. I mean, the opportunities that you have just in picking up a new hobby, from laying out your plan, putting your calendar together, finding the time. What supplies or materials would you need? Now, who am I going to learn from? Well, who might my models be? Do I want to just pick up a book and start reading it and saying, okay, I'm going to read this book and this is going to show me how to do it? Do I want to go online? Just the social aspects of how you're going to learn and then practice it. And then how are you going to build memory uh, cycles in here? Once you, okay, I've got my plan. Now I'm going to learn the skills. How am I going to practice those skills so that I begin to build long-term application? They go long-term memory rhythms, as we call them. 
that allow me to utilize the skill. I've got my plan when I'm doing it. I'm going to go through learning cycles. And then how do I begin to take those learning cycles and lock it in so where I can now just kind of just perform this new hobby in a fun way within the times that I've allowed it. I'm not ignoring everybody else. And sometimes when I learn some new things, I get so crazy about it. I say, wow, I want to go tell 20 more people about how wonderful this hobby is. But you can be a little overly enthusiastic about it. So you want to be careful as you learn something new, especially if you have a partner learning it with you, you know, don't get over exuberant to where you just start rolling over people. And so that's one of the things I find when I get something new and I just love it so much. I want to share it with people I care about. But what I've learned is they may not all want to learn the same thing that I'm learning. They may want to not learn it at the same pace and may have other things that are priorities on their calendars. But the important thing about this particular article, now that's the important thing about this here, is learning new and modifying old hobbies, it boosts your mood, your memory, and your thinking skills. And boy, what a deal that is if we can do those things. We're exercising our brain, we're doing good things for it as you continue to look at what are the elements that science is telling us to help us maintain long-term cognitive fitness and you're having some fun along the way. And the important thing is, is you want to have some fun doing this. You don't want to be stressed over it and make it like, you know, obsessive. You gotta, 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 gotta. It's more like, I'm having some fun doing this. I'm learning some new things. I'm growing my brain. And uh, I'm building some new social friends in the process. And if you can believe it, uh, we have just gone through another week. Well, my calendar tells me today is the 22nd, so we've already entered into the spring season. And uh, we've got uh, Easter coming up in another week. And my God, the time continues to fly. It'll be the end of March within a few days. And we're into April. My goodness, what is that? Groundhog Day we're going to have? Punxsutawney Phil? See where we're going. And of course, starting yesterday was the basketball tournaments and there's plenty of basketball on for the next uh, four days so lots of things to do and baseball season is going to be starting next week and they've already started playing in Korea so my goodness the world is moving and just be a part of it maintain your mental fitness and we'll see you next week <laughs>